Hi there, my name is Chris. I'm the library supervisor for the Field Teen Center. And today I'm just making a little introductory video so that you can get to know a little bit about me and who I am. And I'm also going to give you my list of my top five favorite books that I've read so far this year. I know that 2020 has been a really weird year, but one of the bright spots for me is that it's given me an opportunity to read a little bit more than I have in years past. And I've read some really great books that I'm excited to share with you. So to get started, again, my name is Chris, and you might recognize me from being in the Teen Center. Um, I like to be um, involved in the board games that are happening, always excited to learn or teach a new board game. Um, even though I'm not that great at them, I like to jump in on the video games from time to time. Um, I don't necessarily understand what happens in the fighting games, but I really, really love like uh, role-playing games uh, that you can play we don't always get to play them in the teen center because they're a little bit more of a single player opportunity, but you know, uh, that's something that I really enjoy. Um, in terms of the books, I really love our comics collection. I like reading superhero comics, the DC Marvel stuff, and just regular graphic novels that we have from, you know, places like Boom Studios and the Lumberjane series. I love those. Um, and standalone things like maybe uh, on a Sunbeam by Tilly Walden. That's one of my favorite ones. Um, that takes up a lot of shelf space, but I'm always down to give recommendations for comics for people um, that come into the library or YA fiction. Um, with that, I have mostly an interest in uh, fiction books that have uh, LGBT main characters. So um, if that's something that you're interested in, come and find me and I can definitely give you a recommendation. So now let's get into my top five books that I've read during this year, 2020, the strangest year of all time. Um, earlier in the year, I finished a series that I'd been reading for, um, I think I read the first book when it first came out, which is Scythe by Neil Shusterman. Um, this is a dystopian novel and the final book in the series just came out um, at the end of last year, I believe. And the third book was called The Tull. And I finished that and it's really worth reading the whole series straight through. Sometimes I'll start a series and I'll just read the first book and I won't finish the rest of them. But this is one where I really highly recommend that you read the whole series. It's, um, it's fast paced and energetic. It really like every chapter just leaves you on the edge of your seat wondering what's gonna happen next. Uh, I mentioned that it's a dystopian book. So in this world, um, humanity has managed to conquer um, kind of you know all the bad stuff right hunger disease and even death so humans no longer die a natural death but that causes problems with overpopulation and so this book follows two teens Rowan and Citra who are picked by a scythe which is a person um, who basically decides who lives and dies and they become um, an apprentice to a scythe and are training um, you know to learn the the art of death um, i don't want to say too much more because it's you know it's really something that you have to experience for yourself but again the whole series is really great and i highly recommend it i've got another series that i want to talk about this one was recommended to me by another librarian in the teen center megan and my sister as well um, who was, you know, lent me her copy and was like, you have to read this book. Uh, this book is called Truly Devious by Maureen Johnson. And it's the first of, um, of a series. And it's actually a mystery series, which is, um, I know it's something that a lot of our patrons are interested in. So if you're looking for a murder mystery, this is definitely for you. Uh, this book follows Stevie Bell, who's a teenager. She's a team, you know, a true crime aficionado and she applies to this school, this like kind of like, you know, elite boarding school in Vermont called Ellingham Academy. And this is the site of like a really famous unsolved murder from the 1930s. And so Stevie says, I'm getting into this school and I am going to solve this murder that no one else has, you know, has been able to solve. And I, mm, I can't spoil it. You can't spoil it, you can't do it, no spoilers. Um, but it's a really fun book uh, and if you're into murder mysteries I think you'll really enjoy this one. I would say um, one of the coolest parts of this book is actually in the title Truly Devious. Part of the murder mystery 
involves the fact that there was this like really kind of creepy rhyming letter that was sent um, in advance of the uh, of the crime and the letter is signed truly devious so you'll have to read that one to see what happened and you'll have to read three books because um, the the main mystery is not solved in the first book which is a little strange I was not expecting it but I'm reading the second book now because I just have to know what happens Okay, this next book is a shout out to all of uh, our friends in the Teen Reading Lounge program. It's called You Should See Me in a Crown by Leah Johnson. And this book is a realistic contemporary book. So if you're looking for something that's a little bit more in the here and now, um, and maybe doesn't have to do with like, you know, murder or more murder, like my first two books, um, this might be something that you'd be interested in. It's about Liz Lighty. She's a teen who lives in this Kind of like prom obsessed midwestern town called campbell indiana and she has these high aspirations to go to this um you know elite school that has um, a really great music program and a really well-renowned orchestra and she wants to play music there and study to become a doctor but there's just one hiccup which is that her financial aid falls through and so she doesn't have the financial resources to go to that school anymore so she turns to uh, a new plan, which is she will win, she wants to win the prom queen title, which comes with, again, this town is prom obsessed. So it comes with a full scholarship. So that would kind of like enable her to fulfill her dreams of going to this school, even though she doesn't have the financial aid. Um, there's one hiccup, which is she starts to have like a little crush on someone else who is running for prom queen, Mac. So that causes a couple of problems for her, but this one is uh, a really fun read. I think that if you're interested in kind of like more lighthearted romance type books, you will enjoy this one. All right, next I wanna talk about a graphic novel that I read early this year and that I really, really loved and I've recommended to everybody um, that you know wants to know about new graphic novels. It's called Cosmonites by Hannah Templar. This book is ridiculous it's so fun um basically if i had to describe it this is what i would say uh a you know band of uh space space gays rescue princesses from a like ridiculous patriarchal system where princesses are basically given off as prizes to the winners of these you know, ridiculous mechanical spacesuit gladiator jousting competitions. Um, it's wild, but it's so fun. And I think that if you like graphic novels, if you like books that have art with really bright, beautiful colors, that you'll like this book. All right, my final book for you today is a nonfiction book by Jason Reynolds that was adapted from a book originally by Dr. Ibram X. Kendi. It's called Stamped racism, anti-racism, and you. This is um, a book for someone who is looking to learn more about systemic racism in the United States. This covers like the whole history of racist ideas in America, starting, you know, in the early 1600s and, you know, going through the present. And it's really informative and it's written in a way that's, um, that's really accessible. You know, this isn't like a dense history book. It's more um, like a journey that you take with the author and he really lays everything out uh, very clearly and in a way that makes you want to keep reading and it's a useful tool for people who are looking to learn more about anti-racism and also maybe figure out ways that they can identify racist thoughts in their own minds and in their own daily lives so I highly recommend this if you're um, you know interested in social justice topics or learning more about systemic racism all right, so those are my top five books that I've read so far this year. If you're interested in more book recommendations, I can definitely put together some more videos or you can always reach out to us on Instagram or on our Discord server and we can you know, give you some book recommendations. I'll see you next time.